In today's video, we're going to discuss the tax bracket trap and specifically why most retirees are scared to earn more. Over the past 14 plus years, I've helped retirees build tax plans that help them maximize their income without feeling the burden of taxes. In the hundreds of consultations that I've had, I've noticed that many retirees are worried about the repercussions of taxes as they earn, leading a lot of them to earn and spend less in retirement. Well, in today's video, we're gonna solve this dilemma by walking through why you shouldn't be worried about taxes and how to use it to your advantage. Let's start with why so many retirees believe that earning more income is a bad idea. A lot of this comes from a fear of paying too much in taxes. Our tax rates are progressive. The more you make, the more of what you make is paid in taxes. So it's not specifically the more income that's the problem. It's the taxes. Nobody wants to pay more in taxes than their fair share. I'm sure that you're the same. That's understandable, but we can't let that kind of fear drive our behavior. Now, this all stems from many years where you've been following strategies to lower your tax bill in that year, during your working years, during the accumulation phase. We're all obsessed with lowering the tax bill. For example, making retirement account contributions. Most people have opted for traditional retirement vehicles, which gives you a tax advantage the year that you make the contribution, which helps lower your taxes immediately. I understand why the advice exists to use those vehicles and why most people follow it, but like most things in retirement, what got you to it isn't going to get you through it. A quick example of this kind of behavior is what I refer to as paying tax on the seed versus the harvest. If you're in the 22% tax bracket, that means as a married couple, you can have an annual income of up to $201,050 this year, and you make a traditional IRA contribution. Let's say you put $14,000 in between you and your spouse. You're doing the right thing. You're putting away money for the future. You're maxing out those contributions. But if you did it in a traditional IRA instead of in a Roth IRA, you maxed out the wrong thing. With the traditional, you're getting a tax break of $3,080. That's 22% of the 14 grand that you put in. Here's the rub. If that money grows at 8% for 20 years, it grows into $68,975. If you end up paying 22% tax on that money, you saved $3,080 up front to turn around and pay $15,174 in taxes. You've increased your tax bill by almost 500%. And that's for one year. Do that for... 20 or 30 years. And it's no wonder that people are worried about taxes in retirement. They've built these huge tax bonds. This is what happens when you focus solely on the taxes this year and not the lifetime taxes. It's not about minimizing your tax bill in any specific year. It's about creating a strategy to lower your lifetime tax bill. More on that in just a second. Now, another example of a retirement go-to that can actually be a retirement no-go is investing in tax-preferred vehicles almost exclusively. So many people get really hung up on investing in a 401k and an IRA, and they forget about the after-tax brokerage account. Investing in traditional retirement vehicles, which most people do, tends to lead to a lifetime of continually recurring and oftentimes increasing tax bills. This fuels the behavior of scarcity and avoiding income in retirement by continuing to avoid the taxes. What you're doing is just creating bigger tax bills in the future. The counterproductive behavior of being focused solely on retirement accounts can actually work against you and cause you to pay more in taxes. That's right. Using the tax advantage account can actually cost you more. I'll give you an example. So the after-tax brokerage account which I think is practically a must for anyone who wants to retire early and still hugely beneficial for almost anyone can be a great vehicle to do things like bridge the income gap between the day you retire and when you elect social security. Now, oftentimes you can use money from this type of account, which tend to be taxed at long-term capital gains rates. I'll give you an example of that as well in just a second. And it gives you some excellent opportunities for tax planning for things like Roth conversions when you have a very low taxable income early on in retirement at a time where you can control your own tax bill to your own advantage and lower those lifetime taxes. The second biggie from the after-tax brokerage account is a chance to use asset location, not asset allocation. That's not putting all your eggs in one basket. Asset location is the act of managing and minimizing your taxes based on where you own 
what you own. Here's the example I was talking about. So let's say that 20 years ago, you had a house project to complete. And so you went down to the big store that just opened up. You needed a new power tool. And so you went on down to Home Depot. While you were there, you noticed, hey, it's packed in here. This is a pretty good business. And so you thought to yourself, maybe I should buy a little stock in Home Depot. And so you did. You bought $15,000 of Home Depot stock 20 years ago. Now for the compliance folks, I'm not suggesting that you buy Home Depot stock. This example works with almost any stock that's had good long-term growth, but here we go. So let's get back in the time machine. It's 2004, you bought $15,000 of Home Depot in your IRA account. Remember, you wanna be tax efficient and all of that. And so you put it into the IRA account. You think all those gains will be deferred. 20 years later, your 15,000 has grown into $265,574. That's a big win. And it is, the stock did very well but now you have taxes at your income tax rate on the whole $265,574 at some point. If you end up in the 22% bracket in retirement, which is common, you're basically looking at a $58,000 plus dollar tax bill, and that's assuming that the stock stops growing, which nobody wants. Now, let's pretend that you bought the same stock in your after-tax brokerage account. Still grows to the same amount, but you're looking at far less in taxes. A little over $40,000 of the money was paid as a dividend. So at 22%, you've paid around $8,800 in taxes on the dividends because that's typically paid at income tax rates. And the rest, $210,000 in change, has not yet been taxed, but when you choose to sell it, you're gonna sell and be taxed at long-term capital gains rates. Guess what? You're looking at 15% tax on that money. That's a lot better than taxed at income rates, and you might even stand a shot at paying 0% on them, depending upon what your total income is. But even if you're at 15%, you're looking at 31,000 and change in long-term capital gains tax, add that to the tax on the dividends, you paid around 40,000 in taxes on this, on this transaction. That's a 30% lower tax bill than if you'd have held it in the IRA. And guess what? No required minimum distributions on the after-tax brokerage account. So there's zero forced taxation, You'll pay taxes on that money at a time of your choosing, not at a time that the IRS tells you to. The other big mistake that I often see is the misconception that you shouldn't access your retirement accounts unless you need to, because you don't wanna to have to pay taxes. Now again, this is based on that 40 plus years of tax avoidance behavior. How do I lower the taxes, push them off into the future? I understand it, but probably two or three times a month, I talk to somebody about what I'm about to share with you. Even if you don't need to access your retirement accounts, oftentimes it makes sense to start dripping that money out to avoid RMD creep. Here's how it works. Let's say that you're married, you've done all the right things financially, you've been maxing out your retirement accounts for years, you live below your means, you're in really good shape financially, and you're like, hey, I've won retirement. Because here's the thing, we've got two social security checks, we've got a pension, we're going to have almost $100,000 a year in retirement income without even touching our accounts. And our retirement accounts, by the way, since we've been maxing them out for years, we got $2 million put away. Boom. Retirement one. We've done it. On to the next thing. To that, I would say, excellent job. You've put yourself in a very enviable retirement position and you've likely eliminated question number one, which is, do I have enough money to retire? But you've also got a major tax problem. Here's what tends to happen without doing some hard math. You leave the retirement accounts alone. You go on early in retirement, we crushed it. We're living off the social security, the pension, and then you get the RMD age. If you're 65 years old watching this today, your RMDs will start at age 73. If you're younger than that, chances are good that yours will start at age 75, which actually makes the problem I'm about to tell you about even worse. So here's the problem. $2 million in traditional to be taxed retirement accounts, earning 8% per year, starting at age 65, remember when you retired and pronounced that you won retirement, grows to $3.8 million in eight years. You know what the RMD is on $3.8 million? $143,396. Yeah, over $140,000. Add that to the $100,000 you're already getting and you see the problem. If you have large retirement balances and you don't need the money to live on, one of the worst things you can do is leave the money alone until the RMDs kick in. I know that that's contrary to normal advice, but trust me, don't just leave it alone. Remember, and I know that I sound like a broken record at this point, but we're not trying to minimize taxes in any single year. We want to minimize lifetime taxes to find ways to keep more of your money. The answer here 
is creating a tax plan to start to lower those to-be-taxed balances between retirement date and RMD date, required minimum distribution rate. Typically, we might use a Roth conversion, but regardless of what the strategy is, sitting and waiting and allowing things to grow and defer is a bad strategy. And in this case, it'll cost you thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. So we've talked about a few scenarios to watch out for and what to do in those specific scenarios. But here's the main thing you need to know about taxes and retirement. You need to know the rules of the game. Think about it this way. What if you took somebody to a bowling alley and they didn't know the first thing about bowling, like literally had never seen bowling in their life, and you just told them that they needed to knock down the pins and whoever gets the most pins knocked down wins. If they didn't know any better, they might just saunter on down the lane and start kicking pins over. I mean, for all they know, the only rule is to knock pins down. No one said anything about a ball or rolling it down there or the line that you can't cross. They didn't know the rules of the game that they were playing. I can't tell you how many people I see that don't know the tax rules of the retirement game. You've got to know the difference between income tax rates, capital gains rates, tax-free versus taxable dividends. There are some huge efficiencies that can be gained by understanding these rules. Think back to our Home Depot stock example from a couple of minutes ago. Knowing the rules of the game, not just don't pay too much in taxes, is incredibly important in creating a tax efficient plan. Now, once you understand those rules, a couple of which I covered earlier today, the next step is to be able to weigh the pros and cons of when it's time to pay some of those taxes, when it's time to realize taxes, maybe to push into the next tax bracket and when to stand pat. I'll give you a quick example. Let's go back to the retiree who had $100,000 in retirement income and $2 million in to be taxed retirement accounts at 65, remember them? the ones that won retirement, they were planning to avoid taking anything from their retirement accounts, which would cause their accounts to balloon to $3.8 million by 73, which sounds like a really good problem to have when I say it. But anyway, if they retired at 65 with that $100,000 in income, much of which was social security, they would be right around the threshold of the 12% to 22% tax bracket. Now, what I would suggest is that they've got eight years to diffuse their tax bomb to get that $2 million of to be taxed money as low as is reasonable to avoid the RMD creep. Now, if they started a Roth conversion plan, they could get up to $201,050 in taxable income and stay in that 22% bracket, which would help, but it's only gonna allow them to convert about $100,000 a year. If they crossed over into the next bracket, if they didn't avoid it, if they went to the 24% bracket, they can go all the way up to $383,900. That would give them almost $300,000 in available Roth conversions in any given year. Now, there's more to it than just this, but that's a perfect example of when it makes sense to climb up a bracket or maybe even two brackets and realize some of those taxes today. As for a few great ways to lower your taxes, remember, we're playing the long game here. Use Roth accounts when they're available, unless you're currently in a top tax bracket. Basically, if you're watching the video and you make less than $400,000 a year, you should really be looking at Roth accounts, whether it's a Roth IRA, if you're below the income threshold there, a Roth 401k, which has no income threshold, or through backdoor Roth contributions. Look for Roths where you can get the money there because it's future tax free. Another great option, don't forget about the after-tax brokerage account, but when you use it, try to hold tax-efficient assets in the account. Growth stocks, exchange-traded funds, or ETFs that own stocks are perfect for this sort of long-term growth because you won't realize the taxes on appreciation until you choose to when you decide to sell. And when you do, it's likely to be at long-term capital gains rates, not at income tax rates. And that can save you thousands of dollars in additional unnecessary taxes. Now you've learned why you shouldn't be afraid to earn more. You can start enjoying your retirement the way it's intended to be. However, there are other factors of retirement planning I haven't been able to consider in this short video. If you want answers to some of retirement's difficult questions, click the link in the description below.